Well, thanks so much. Um, definitely um, excited to have you close out uh, GitOps days with a very, very important topic, which of course is policy. Um, I've heard you talk about this before, and so I think it's really important to uh, reiterate. And for those who are new to GitOps days, you are you have a treat ahead of you. So uh, yes, Tony and Mo, take it away. Awesome. You hear me okay, Tamal? Uh, yes. All right, great, great. So hey, everyone, my name is Tony, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, policy management and GitOps today. Uh, just to and, uh, and this is this is Mo. Uh, I'm the VP of Developer Platform. I'm uh, also partner in crime with Tony and the Policy as Code. We, uh, we came together from Magalix uh, through the uh, through the acquisition that we works uh, did earlier this year. So uh, all to you back, to Tony. Uh, I'll be just listening in the background and answering questions. Yeah, all good. Yeah, as Mo said, uh, we've been a part of the Weaveworks team since the beginning of the year through the Magalix uh, acquisition. And for those that are not familiar with Magalix, Magalix was a company that was providing policy as code essentially as a service uh, to integrate into your uh, CI/CD pipelines. Uh, so moving on. And so today, you know, I'm hoping we're going to achieve a few, you know, accomplish a few things. Uh, one, I want to demystify policy as code. Uh, I want to teach you Rego in under five minutes. Uh, and then I want to explain the connection between GitOps and policy as code and why um, not only the acquisition, but why the two, uh, you know, different technologies want, you know, come together and why it makes sense. And so just taking a step back here, um, you know, how many out there have, witnessed a uh, production outage due to a misconfiguration. Uh, and this is from a movie that I saw recently. Uh, I joke that I have, you know, sausage fingers and, you know, I'll tell you something that uh, uh, these have done more than witnessed uh, production outages, uh, you know, back in my day, right? Um, I think if you use kubectl uh, to uh, manage your production clusters, uh, sooner or later, you're gonna apply a misconfiguration uh, even in my own history, uh, I remember I worked on a team where every time uh, a new microservice was developed, uh, that same development team was responsible for creating their own Kubernetes deployment manifest. Uh, and I remember uh, when we were first getting started, uh, you know, they wouldn't uh, add things like replica counts, uh, you know, any, they wouldn't define the resources um, or the ports, and it was just, you know, I get it, right? Because, you know, that's not their bread and butter. But uh, I think at the end of the day, cloud native is, you know, not hard because of like the difficulty to like administer the, these things. I think cloud native is hard because there's just so many things that like you have to remember. So as a developer, not only am I responsible for the business logic, Maybe from full stack, I have to work on the UI. And then all of a sudden now I have to configure, you know, ports and replica accounts. Like that's a lot, right? And so, um, you know, what if there was a way to say, look, we can ensure that only proper configurations get applied to any cluster that we choose. Like, what if we can codify that? What if we can cement that? What if we've learned our lessons and we don't want that ever happening again, right? And this is where policy as code, um, right? Really, really, uh, you know, kicks in and solves, right? This problem, right? So, you know, what do I mean by policy as code? You know, when I first heard this term, I was like, what is policy as code? Are, do I take the HRs, do's and don'ts, and like scan the text into Python and do something? Like, what does this mean, policy as code, right? Like, and so I'm gonna break it down for you, right? Policy as code is simply a way to codify your organization's technical standards. And what does that really mean, right? So let's say in your organization, um, all deployments to production require a replica count of two or greater. You can write a policy to enforce that. 
let's say you want that policy, but then you have another policy that says, well, except in the case if the clusters are named you know, US East something, those require a minimum of three. You can write a policy for that too. So uh, because this policy is code, right? It's written in OPA Rego, right? So what is this? Uh, OP, for those that don't know, OPA is a CNCF graduated project uh, for policy as code. And uh, if you're using this, uh, if you're using uh, a policy solution now, I'm pretty sure it's OPA under the hood. And, and thirdly here, uh, this is more, I would say more of a description, uh, an attribute of policy as code or something you should do versus a definition. But uh, you know, when we're talking about policy as code, uh, policies as code should scale out. And what I mean by scaling out is um, I can write the policy once and apply that to one cluster, a subset of clusters, or you know, across my entire organization. And to the left means that uh, for my Kubernetes operators, administrators, you're not constantly uh, trying to track down bad configurations to get them fixed. Uh, you can start moving the responsibility over uh, towards uh, the develop the development uh, of the, of configurations and deployable Kubernetes artifacts, um, and you know incorporate that into you know your development pipelines. All right, and so you know we talked to, I talked a little bit about teaching policy in the five minutes. Well, here it is, right? And so what you're looking at is uh, the Rego playground. This is available. Um, on the web, it's a, a place where you can test uh, your Rego code. And so on the left-hand side, we actually have uh, uh, a modified version of one of the earliest policies that we wrote at Magalix uh, that represents exactly uh, the replica count uh, example that I've been talking about you know, for the past couple of minutes. That's on the left side. On the right-hand side, uh, you'll see this section called input uh, and some JSON. What that really is, it's a deployment manifest that I had that I use for demos uh, that's just been converted to JSON format and pasted in there. And so, uh, you know, if you've dabbled in OPA a little bit or looked at the docs just briefly, you might be asking yourself, you might have asked yourself, like, what, you know, what, what is this, right? <laughs> it's not, it's not, you know, object-oriented programming. You know, I, I think the way to look at it, it's more like querying, right? You're, you're asking, you know, is something true or false? And so if we start breaking this code down, uh, you know, I think the first statement is pretty straightforward here, right? Replica count, scalar value equals two. So it's like a vari variable declaration. We get to the violation block, uh, which is just how our system works. Uh, and then you have, this, you have this statement here, which you know, looks a little, you know, maybe a little backwards to some. Uh, it says not input, dot spec dot replicas is greater than or equal to replica count. Well, if we start breaking this down, replica count we know equals two. And input, you see it's in blue here. Blue, uh, it's a special term um, in OPA. We saw input earlier. And so input dot spec dot replicas. So if we look through the code, spec is at the root level dot replicas equals one. So this statement here says, if one is not greater than or equal to two, kick in, you know, kick the, you know, trigger violation. And I'll run that back real quick in a different way. Uh, so if I were to rewrite this in kind of a more positive way, I suppose, it would be, input spec replicas is less than or equal to replica count. Because then if you read that out loud, you know, is one less than or equal to two? Well, that's true. We don't want that kick a violation. Um, and that's how, that's how Rego works. That's how policy works under the hood. And so what does that have to do with GitOps? Right, so you've heard for the last two days about GitOps, some experiences. In a nutshell, um, right, it's continuous delivery, or excuse me, continuous deployment, excuse me, continuous deployment right, of IC. 
Uh, and so if you're using Git, what you're seeing on the screen probably mirrors a flow similar to your own, which is somebody proposes a change that gets requested. There's a peer review. If that's approved, that gets that code gets merged into some main branch that then triggers uh, a deployment into your cluster. Right? If you're following GitOps, you know this is constantly reconciling. This is constantly happening. Right? And so as a standalone product. Excuse me. Oops. Policy usually comes shipped in you know the form of an agent that you deploy to a cluster, right? And then you tell the agent these are the policies that I want applied, and then you get what's known as runtime or audit time uh, feedback. It's not really blocking; it just tells you you know based on the policies that you have enabled, you know where your cluster sits, you know against your standards, right? But then talking about, you know, shifting left. Well, as as you deploy an agent and see what's going on, your Kubernetes operators are trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we, you know, decrease the numbers to a point where everything's compliant? You don't want new objects coming in, um, creating new violations of existing policies, right? You don't want to just keep adding to the problem, right? Adding fuel to the flame, right? And so policies should be integrated, can be integrated now with your mission controller, right? So if replica counts should be two, and then a deployment tries to get applied, a scan is made, and if the replica count is two or greater, or based on what the policy says, it will get scheduled. If not, it will get blocked. And then thirdly, this is really where GitOps and policies, you know, come together, right? Because everything's in Git, um, pretty much a pull request is, uh, you know, something missed in a pull request is going to go out to production, right? This can happen to the best of us. So pol enforcing the same policies that are applied to production at, like, development time means that now before... You know, even 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 before there's a pull request, right? You could um, even use a pre-commit hook. I mean, shout out to shout out to the homie Samir, uh, who was on our team, my team in Magalix, uh, where he built our own internal OPA testing pipe, you know, policy testing pipeline, where on a pre-commit hook, uh, you know, we would run an OPA container that were an OPA test, and we would inject test, and if you know, we would expect pass or fail, right? And so uh, you can even do this uh, at development time. So these you know, known bad configurations don't even get attempted uh, to enter the system. And if they do, they're blocked uh, you know, at emission control time. And if they happen for whatever reason, it's impossible. But if you know, there's something new, or I should probably say something existing, right? you get it at the audit time. Right? And policy should cover you know, all of this. Right. I think a good analogy is essentially if you're doing continuous deployment of your microservices, how is that? How are you able to do that? It's probably because you have some level of automated testing that you trust or you should wink, wink. That gives you some confidence that at least the basics smell OK. Right. I think in that using that same analogy. You could look at policy in that same way, right? Does this configuration pass the smell test? Yes or no? Right? And you get that at CI, right? Or even pre-CI. I hope this stuff is starting to make sense. Uh, if not, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, so look, uh, scripts, manual deployments, double checking, uh, I will quote uh, my friend Kay. My friend Kay told me this two weeks ago. He goes, hey, Tony, that's so Yahoo 2005. Uh, I had a laugh. And here's the thing. Like, there's no knocking Yahoo. And let's not knock 2005. Because you know what? That's what we were doing back then, right? I, I, was, I was working uh, at that time uh, in the Yahoo Center in Santa Monica. It wasn't a Yahoo. It was a Yahoo Center. There was a lot of folks from Yahoo. Right, we had custom scripts, 
but also we were like we had 36 boxes right we weren't even running vms we were you know building ears and we were running web logic it was a different time right and that worked right but now we're talking cloud native kubernetes multiple things changing on top of an constantly evolving ecosystem like you need some guarantees right and that's how we're doing it today i right? get up some policies and so um all day you've heard about GitOps. what about policy maybe it's still you're not sure maybe it seems a little bit overly complicated here's the thing we're talking we're still talking GitOps. so even the policies are in git so you get all the benefits of GitOps, right? You get the, you get the paper trail, you get the, I mean, the audit trail. Um, sorry, I'm still talking old school stuff. Uh, you get the audit trail, you get all the benefits of Git, um, and it's, it's in code, right? Just like everything else. Again, we're integrating our policy. What I'm talking about rings a bell. Right, we're not discussion here, right? This is um, simply uh, talking about, um, sorry, my internet is unstable. Uh, this is simply talking about, uh, you know, adding checkpoints to your existing workflow. Dev and ops are aligned again, right? No more throwing over the wall. Developers get fee a feedback loop. If you're using a Git, you know, hosted Git solution, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, you know, your own, hopefully not, right? You're more than halfway there. And then lastly, if you are interested, but you're not, we're sure, not sure where to start, you can always reach out to us. Uh, and a big shout out goes to the developers on the enterprise team, the sales and the SA folks, um, you know, helping people adopt, you know, really good practices um, and resiliency in the organization. And so again, my name is Tony. Thank you. Hopefully uh, you learned a thing or two today and I will catch you uh, on the next run.